Hey buddy, hope you guys are doing all right. So here we got uh, information on water. So the land we acquire or gain an allowance to should have at least one of the following. River access, creek bed access, stream access, working well system, and or a underground <clears throat> river slash water supply. The area we get the land in should also get a good amount of rainfall each year as we will also be collecting and using our rainwater as well as water that flows naturally at ground level and below ground if circumstances and reasoning permit. With the same principle as with all other products and goods we offer for exchange, there will be no profit added. However much it costs to produce a bottle of water will be the price. Now, we need to factor in variables like the time and labor of individuals and an X amount for the amount of water we use in comparison to how much the land and the water access actually costs. Even with all these factors, the price should be far less than most if not all of these companies because they are, I presume, driven mostly by profiteering principles. <clears throat> Scrolling down, oh, no I'm not, hold on. And right there is a link um, that goes into the statistics of uh, just the water consumption in the United States. And here's a little bit of information on that. In 2021, 15.3 billion gallons of bottled water were sold in the United States. Over the last 10 years, the country's bottled water sales volume has increased considerably with each consecutive year. So they are more, so they are more likely, so they are more than likely making billions off of the simple profiteering business of bottling up water and putting a label on it and selling it. <clears throat> we can do the same thing and offer them the fair price it actually costs to produce these bottles and I do not want to continue the 20 ounce version because they are so wasteful and one of the main problems in the world today and the ocean when it comes to pollution and damage to wildlife is an excessive amount of thrown away and discarded bottles of water and or trash. <clears throat> The Great Barrier Reef, what's happening over there, it's just, it, it's real bad. There's supposed to be like a floating island of garbage in the ocean, so it's a pretty big issue. <clears throat> Once we expand more, uh, we can start programs to help clean up the oceans and uh, re reuse what trash we can for whatever we can and do our best to eliminate the other waste from the ocean and other wildlife preserves and transfer it somewhere better suited to deal with such pollution. And if there is a way to chemically slash naturally break down these hard to dispose of items, perhaps we could do that too. In the end, whatever works and is allowed by God. <clears throat> Amen. So the average cost for a gallon of bottled water is $9.60. It is about $1.50 for a 20 ounce bottle. Now a smart way to do it in the cities is to fill up a five gallon water jug at a supermarket, but not everyone does that. And I am curious at how much those companies profit because I know it doesn't cost more than a few dollars to fill up the entire five gallon jug but one does need to have their own jug. <clears throat> but it still seems pretty cheap for a modern day company. So again, I am curious to see how much it actually costs to fill up a five gallon jug. Uh, but anyway, onward. We could uh, offer similar water stations for people to fill up their hemp jugs all around the cities too. And again, only charge the amount we need to maintain functionability. And of course, the same, pri the same price principle would be associated with the hemp jugs as with every and all else. <clears throat> So with 3D printing tech, we can make our own water bottles and jugs out of hemp, which is biodegradable and antimicrobial, antifungal, and antibacterial. Hemp, it's also hemp is a great water filter as well, so there's a possibility you could incorporate that. Um, hemp is also ready to harvest in four months, and it can be used to revitalize soil. <clears throat> and here's a link to show how hemp can revitalize soil. And here's also just a little bit of information I copy and pasted. Hemp can help refresh and depleted soil by restoring stability and nutrients to the area. Hemp's roots grow deep very quickly, holding soil together and protecting the area from erosion. When the plant is harvested, it also leaves behind large amounts of biomass that can be left to decompose and enrich the soil once again. I think you can also use biomass um, to make biofuel, but or you can use it to revitalize the soil. <clears throat> So as we expand, we begin to work on aqueducts. We can begin to work on aqueducts and or plumbing underground with eco-friendly materials and give people a similar type of water access as in these cities, except without all the bad stuff and pollutants <clears throat> and without the unfair price. However, I say in the future because it is not a necessity. And until we have enough manpower and resources, I don't want to spend resources on, or time on anything that isn't absolutely necessary right now. <clears throat> 
Um, so things like running water with the help of pipes can be very, and again, the pipes, the material that the pipes are made out of is very important. Um, I'd like to look into using ceramics, even bioceramics, which can be used from waste. <clears throat> but just the pipes are going to be something that are good for the human body and for the environment. Just because I know a lot of the pipes they use today aren't. So we're gonna change that. Um, and especially in places like Africa where they have been, uh, where they have issues getting water. But again, the whole Africa operation won't be able to truly be begun until we have a working system here in America first. And until we reach a level of abundance that allows us to go over there and do all that the right way. <clears throat> So, I mean, I look forward to that. That's one of the things I really look forward to with this mission is going to, you know, foreign countries or war-torn countries that really, really, really need help with just basic infrastructure systems and helping them build up. Um, <clears throat> but first, we got to make sure it works here in America first and make sure that America has a system set up for when it hits the wall that it has something to fall back on. Um, so, yeah, we take care of that first and then we can, you know, take uh, our work wherever it is needed. So... Yeah, I right, love you guys. Y'all have a good day. Bye.